Up until a few years ago, I used to just lie constantly. I was just such a compulsive liar. I think, as I've said before, I was never a pathological liar. From what I understand, and I don't know very much, a pathological liar is somebody who actually comes to believe the lies that they're telling. Whereas a compulsive liar like I was just feels a constant need to be lying. And, but is well aware that they're telling a lie the entire time. That might not even be correct. But yeah, no, I used to lie just constantly. I hear it's an Irish thing. I've heard that the Irish love to hear themselves tell stories. And even though I wasn't raised in Ireland, you know, it's it does feel very much like the tall tale kind of thing. I used to tell lies in the form of grand stories that were so far beyond the the humor of your daily life. My life is so funny. Um, they were so far beyond the scope of your life. Like the things that happened to me happened on such a grand scale that you could not even imagine. Usually I would whip these out. No, I, I'd usually plan them. I'd usually plan them like while I was like driving somewhere. And I'd be like, ooh, that would be an interesting thing to, to say to these people about something that happened, you know. Especially, they were sort of preparations in my back pocket for if a conversation went dead, if it was a one-on-one -on -one interaction, or it, like in a group setting, if I felt like I wasn't getting the attention that I wanted to. Because, you know, when you're in a group, uh, the attention is the currency, you know. That's what determines who's the king of this group, is who people are continuously turning their head toward the most. And I would just, I would have a habit of getting, I can get steamrolled in groups even still to this day. So it was just a nice little way for me to grab some attention. It's just like, oh, here's a big grand story that absolutely did not happen. Maybe sometimes there was a kernel of truth, but usually there wasn't even that. It was just outright lies. And this is, this is something that I realized recently because I told this very, very untrue story in my sophomore writing class, or English class. We had to write a nonfiction, and it, I told this story about a time when I was like a day camp counselor at a performing arts day camp, which is true, I was that, but like this time when a kid had an allergic reaction to eating peanuts or peanut butter or something, and then like, a, like the lady who was the head of stuff like gave him an EpiPen, and I just cringe so hard looking back on it that I ever tried to tell this story like purportedly as true. There was absolutely no truth to it whatsoever and anybody, the thing is also about lying when you're young is that you don't understand the world very well so there are little things that you're unconsciously saying that don't make any sense. You don't, like one of the details is that she like gave him the EpiPen in his chest. You don't fucking do that. Whoa. I told myself I'd give myself one swear a month. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you don't give a kid an EpiPen in the chest. And just, I mean, all this stuff about it was just very embarrassing to look at, back on these details that I thought seemed believable. Or maybe they just seemed so funny that people just wouldn't even care to question it. Problem is, I mean, the only way, the ways that these stories hurt me now is that a lot of the times I tell them around people that I wanted to get the respect of. And when I told this in front of the class, you know, I presented it, the whole class just loved it. They just ate it right up. I think a lot of them even believed it because they were of the intelligence and worldview that I was, which was very, very limited. But I felt really good that I got my uh, English teacher impressed. He really, really liked the story and he put a note saying like, thank you for sharing this. Which is, Really nice and heartbreaking when I look back on it, because he obviously knew that it wasn't a true story. He obviously knew that there was, like, at best, maybe he could have said, well, he saw a kid, like, have a bad reaction to having peanuts, you know. But he heavily embellished it. I didn't even have that, though. So he doesn't even have to give me that benefit of the doubt, Mr. Gonzalez. Um, I had so much respect for him, and, I mean... Yeah, it's just it's just sad when you realize like, oh yeah, he knew the entire time. But I think that also makes me like him even more because I think that he saw that, you know, I did have a real talent for writing. And I mean, I still do. 
but like that was the way that I was going to stand out in a classroom. It wasn't necessarily going to be socially, it was going to be through my stories. Even false ones. And I went up there and presented it, and I think that he could see that it, you know, meant a lot to me, and he was happy that it got the, the class all, you know, all in a good mood. I think that he really prioritized certain... I mean, I'm sure that you have to do that as an adult a lot of the time. You have to just kind of, like, if a kid is saying something that is not based in truth or, like, is very misguided, after a certain point, you just kind of have to stick, take a step back and say, like, yeah, that's okay, though. You know, because I see that there are sometimes more important things than pointing out what is directly true. And I really liked that. If he had even made a note saying, like, this obviously did not happen, like, on my paper, I probably wouldn't have gotten as close to him. And I wouldn't have had nearly the great experiences in his class that I did after that. And because this was like at the beginning of my time as a student and I ended up being, a, I had two more classes with him. So I was with him for three years. Yeah, and I wouldn't have had, like, some amazing experiences that he provided for me, like the fact that I was a state champion in speech and debate. He ran the speech and debate team. It was awesome. It was awesome. Even my state championship winning speech, which granted was a stand-up comedy uh, segment, like, it was, it was that event that I was competing in. So, people didn't necessarily prioritize the truth as much for that one, but that one also had some, like, falsities in it. Ugh. But I'm really trying to just keep, I'm trying to find what's compelling about what actually happened. <laughs> uh, at the very least, it just, it makes me not cower in fear that I'm going to be continuously found out. Anyway, I'm going to go hang out with Jake Gyllenhaal, we're homies.